Hey there, hope you're doing well. My name is Christopher Odd. Welcome to a new series on Star Renegades. This is a roguelite strategy game that's... I'm super pumped. I did the tutorial and I'm like, I'm hooked. Not to mention the mechanics are super fun. The gameplay seems really enjoyable. But the art style is so good. I haven't seen anything quite like this. Uh, I'll probably be better off just jumping in and showing it to you right away uh so let's dive in there is a small intro video that uh kind of sets things up a little bit and then we'll get right into the gameplay you do have the option of starting a playthrough without um without doing the tutorial but the tutorial actually adds certain story elements that i think are really important the other thing is if you're not playing it yourself and you're strictly going to be watching the series then you want to know all the mechanics. You want to learn it as we do. So let's keep the tutorial on. Let's start a new game and let's rock and roll. Over Norosh, a small force of mysterious raiders destroys the mighty Star Union Armada. The surviving starfighters attempt to regroup, pursued by the relentless enemy squadrons. Win! Answer me! Let me know you're alive. I'm fine, Dav. Those enemy fighters are good. Really good. Lucky I managed to land in one piece. And you get points for missing all those buildings. Oh, sub sub crud. <laughs> I've got more of those fighters on my tail. Where are they all coming from? I landed by the train to Fort Garen. If I can get to the base in time, you can get those anti-aircraft guns online. My thoughts exactly. That'll be a nice surprise for these fighters following me. Great plan. I'll call me when I'm at the base. Over and out. Let's rock and roll. Okay. Look, look at this. Okay. Pixel art. It's not for everybody, but this is like the way that this is done. Just wait till we get into the battles. Oh. It's so beautiful. So here's our starfighter. Not looking so hot. Not the best use of taxpayer credits. Yeah, I'd say so. We have a citizen out here. Oh, sure. The government tells us some mysterious fleet just appears out of nowhere. Next thing you know, they pass some laws confiscating massive stockpiles of mega nuclear material. Even though it's my right to own it. <laughs> Jeez. A little bit timely. Man, I've got 1,700 creds riding on the Armada. Maybe I ought to do a last second short. This is some serious investment talk. I know some of these words. Thank you for your service, ma'am. But could you please send someone to clear the smoking wreckage? We have children here. That's excellent. You know what? Sure. These raiders from another dimension just destroyed our armada. But I think we should hear out what they plan to do post-occupation. Maybe they're into low taxes and grinding the poor into dust. That's some policy I could get behind. Well, we'll see. Let's get out of here. I'm picking up some strange signatures on that train. Something tells me they aren't commuters. And these raiders have ground troops too then, eh? Let's go. Oh, so cool. All right. 
Let's see how they are in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Prepare to meet my doom. I think you meant your doom? Uh, never mind. This will be a cinch. I'll take him out with a cleave. Okay, so this is the whole combat system in Star Renegades. It's deterministic, meaning you can see your enemy's actions before they execute, allowing you to defend, crit, stagger, or break them. All actions are displayed on the timeline according to their execution time in the round, except for instant actions, which execute immediately. Shocking. Each round is 60 seconds, so this whole timeline is 60 seconds long. A unit's current health is shown in the status bars above their heads consists of shield, health, and armor. That's pretty standard. Any effects are also displayed above the status bars. On enemies, you can see the actions that they're going to execute. So here he's going to fire at you. Shields regenerate at the end of every combat. Health and armor can be increased or healed during camping or from health and armor crates found during your mission. Cool. So this first battle, they're going to basically tell us what to click on, and then you're going to see what it's going to do. So it will kind of explain some of these things. I don't want to get ahead of myself and start explaining. So we'll just do the cleave. It's going to do 35 damage against a single target. But if we crit, we could do more. We'll talk about crits soon. Let's just hit it. Notice he's going to act first on the timeline. Our cleave doesn't come in until later. A little laser to the face. It's good. Put hair on your chest. It's like eating onions. He may be dumb, but I should probably hit him before he hits me. He'll recalibrate and I'll crit him with a slash. Okay, so this is really important. Uh, a crit occurs when a unit's hit before they can execute their action. The crit bonus that is applied is shown below the attacking power's main information. So this crit bonus down in here. Crits can do extra damage, break the enemy's attack, pierce shields of armor, damage armor, or of other devastating effects. Be careful though, enemies can also crit your heroes with their hit before they can execute their attack. So one of the key things here is this uh, time, and we'll talk about that in a bit. So our slash, you notice he's hitting uh, on the second dot of the timeline. Our slash would go in before that, so we're, we're going to guarantee that we get a crit, which is extra damage output. We do some armor uh, destruction. He doesn't have any, so it doesn't matter. And we end up pushing him back on the timeline. You can see that re reflected here. Shields down. Let's roll. This music reminds me of like old school, old school like PlayStation RPGs. So good. Yeah, that got his attention. I'll smash him with a hue to break him and stall his attack. Now, attacks can stagger an enemy's action. Delaying it to execute later in the round, allowing your squad to execute more actions and crits before the enemy can act. And that's, I think, one of the big keys of combat here. You want to strategically push your enemies down the timeline to get as many crits as you can, but then you also want to be able to break them and push them off the timeline. The amount of stagger an attack will do when it crits is shown in green beside the stagger time delay icon. So right here, that's your stagger amount. With careful planning, you can chain attacks together to land multiple staggers on an enemy and break them by pushing them into the next round. However, enemies have a stagger limit, denoting how many times they can be staggered before they're immune. This is shown on the timeline beside their portrait. An enemy stagger limit increases again after they execute their action. So this prevents you from being able to permanently push enemies back, right? Because it would get, it would be no challenge once you figure out the rhythm. So this little icon here is what they're referencing. Means they can take two staggers before becoming immune. Once immune, they can then initiate and uh, let their attack go uh, and hit us. And then we can re-stagger. Okay, so we have Hugh available. We're going to hit. Uh, we are going to crit because it's coming in early. So we're going to push them back 20 seconds. Take a look at what this does. You can see here. I love that it gives you a nice little preview of what's about to happen. And when things get crazier and you have more enemies and you have more people on your side, there's a lot to consider. And like the strategy part is really, really fun to try and figure out. So we're going to hit this. We're going to stagger, but also break. Notice no action. Time to end this. A slash should finish the job. So pushing them off of here is huge. But notice now... He's only got the one uh, stagger before he's immune. So even if we try, even if we had something big that would uh, that would stagger him, 
it would be good to push him down the timeline, but beyond that, it's going to be hard to hit with something that would push him all the way off and break him again. So we're just going to go for a slash. This is going to be a crit anyways, and it's going to finish him off. So let's go. Beautiful. We're rich. We have two bucks. Space bucks. Okay. I'm at the base. Just what I thought. It's been hit with some kind of EMP. Well, at least the coast is... Teleported in. Union techs have been researching that for decades. How'd these guys do it? They may be more advanced than us, but at least we can take them out in a fight. Let's see how I do against this next one. Some of these vibes, too, I I, I feel like FTL is like a decent uh, adaptation of kind of to describe the mentality of the game. But also uh, that little strategy game where you're the little robots on those tiny little tiles. That one, too. Just remember your training and you'll be fine. Yeah, let me in there. So there's things that we can kind of investigate out here. Wow, I guess the Earth shifted enough to expose one of these Titan hands. We don't know what the Titan hands are, but we'll try and figure it out. Let's get in here. You can see what's going to happen. Once you cross, you're going to have to fight. All right. Once it lets me loose, that's when my real juju is going to show. The Imperium will make you burn. Sounds like you could use some ointment for that. Now let's try a cleave. All right, so he's very close to the end of the timeline, so very easy to, to break into the next section. So if we cleave here, we're obviously going to get the um, uh, the crit, which is going to damage some of his armor. It's also going to push him. Uh, he does have some resistance here. We'll learn about that in a bit. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. There we go. Now notice, we didn't actually push him completely off the timeline. He was still just hanging on there by a thread. Oh, that didn't work. Maybe a lighter touch. Let's try Hue. So, all attacks have a core damage type that describes what kind of attack it is. They're light, normal, heavy, flurry, AoE, counter, and combo attacks. Adversaries may be weak to specific core damage types and take extra damage and delays from them. However, they can also be resistant or even immune to specific core damage types and take little to no damage or delays from them. So you notice here, resist versus this, weak versus this. Okay. So, wants us to hue. Now, he's going for an immolate attack. We're going to apply uh, the hue, which attacks early on. We're also going to push him back pretty significantly, so this should break. Uh, let's go. Working through those shields. Notice down here we have some fury building up. We'll learn about that soon too. That's better. Now to slash him for another break. So because because uh, we have attacks that can do significant uh, time pushes or staggers, we're going to be able to push him off here again, which is pretty rare, but it's a tutorial, so it's going easy on us. There you go. His break limit is empty. So much for delaying him. I'll have to defend to minimize damage from his flame attack. So now, in the real game, we could whip out one of these other attacks if we wanted. We could do whatever we want, but it wants us to defend here. So this is going to give us extra defense. Notice he's really early in the bar, too. And our defense uh, gets played right away. So we're going to hit this now. I mean, still looks like it hurt. Our shields are down. Okay, pal, getting sick of you. Let's try to crack your armor with Sunder. So armor absorbs damage before it reaches health. The amount of damage that can be absorbed per hit is equal to the amount of armor that they have. So here's a good example. If you have a, an attack damage of 56 and they have uh, 48 shield, so you hit the enemy shields first. So that takes 56 minus 48. So you're left with eight. The armor then absorbs the rest of that so the remaining health damage is 8 minus the armor for nothing. We're not going to do anything uh, in this example that they're giving. Attacks can use armor damage or can cause armor damage on crits. Display the amount of armor damage done in the attack details. So right here. Some, type, or some attacks or elemental damage types can pierce armor. And while it doesn't damage it, it can bypass some of it and damage the enemy's health directly. So you can see here. 100% versus shield, pierces 0% versus shields, 
100% versus health, but Pierce is 33% versus armor. So there's those three things that we need to keep in mind. However, health is the ultimate goal to reduce. Okay, so Sunder's a big one. It's a 15 push, does eight uh, armor damage, and he only has eight. So let's lay this on. This is also going to break him. His armor is completely broken. Now to finish him off, I'll crit him with a slash. So he's early in the timeline. Slash. Everything else is on cooldown anyways. Let's give her. And it showed their kill shot. I, I think one of the strongest aspects of this game, once things start to uh, get a little crazier with more enemies and more companions, like that preview section is super well done. Look, we're now we're, we got five space bucks. I can use those guns right about now. I've got a trail of fighters right behind me. I'm working on it. Roger that. Yeesh. Little sis to the rescue, I guess. Okay. What else is going on over here? Let's take a look. Fort Garen. Fort Garen saw a lot of action in the Flux Wars, but now it's mostly used for training. We got some banners out here. Terminals. AA guns. Anything in the south? Not that I can tell. I don't think we can do anything with the AA gun. Let's hit the terminal. Okay, Dav, the guns are powered up. There we go, online. Like, look how awesome... This is, is so visually stunning, in my opinion. Like, you think pixel art, and it has a certain kind of connotation with it, but when it's done like this, it's, like, so good. I'll leave these fighters right to you. It'll be like shooting zub zubs in a barrel. My favorite pastime. Let's roll on zub zubs. Uh, where'd that ominous otherworldly ship come from? I've got a bad feeling. As we should. Yavian, pull up. Something else took remote control of the guns. <laughs> Guess I botched the landing. Yeah, if you're alive. We've got to get out of here. Can you walk? I'm fine. Just a little shaken. That was a close call. I found what you were looking for, mother. He's as pathetic as you said he'd be. This is Basilisk. Look at this thing. <laughs> Let me at him. Let me at him. Your life, it is nothing. Kind of sounds like dad, right? Not the time for jokes, Wayne. Remember, find his weakness and exploit it again and again. Oh, maybe I'm sounding like dad now. All right. So we can use inspection mode to view a unit's stats and who they are targeting. While in inspection mode, you can also view a unit's traits and effects to see what weaknesses, strengths, resistances, and immunities they have. When targeting an enemy, you are shown a prediction of the outcome of your actions that uh, on that enemy for that round. If your actions will presumably result in the death of the enemy, then a kill shot indicator will be displayed. But, but... Damage predictions and the kill shot indicator are not always 100% accurate because many things like heals, damage buffs, defense buffs can happen before the final blow lands, resulting in a changed outcome. Okay, so we're kind of out on our own now. If we want, we can take a look. Uh, we can inspect units and we can see what's going on uh, with this one. So you can see some of the traits in the bottom. Uh, if you hold... Uh, Z to inspect and then X to inspect effects. You can see they're, they're weak versus heavy attacks and they have extra defense versus light attacks. So we should try and throw down the heavy ones as much as possible. Um, you can see this is a combo. This is a flurry. This is AOE also denotes by this little icon here. Vivisect is a heavy one. And then we have defend. Now, if I throw in Vivisect, He's going to attack and he's going to hit us. We can see what his uh, intention is. So he's planning to attack uh, uh, Win down here. Uh, Win's attacks, this is something we might want to consider, is we've got normal, light, heavy, sunder. So we could sunder and push back like 15 seconds. I'm over analyzing this, but I'm just doing it for the sake of uh, explaining how we can kind of manipulate the timeline. And then if we can push them beyond like roughly this point, then we have a big heavy attack there that we can also use. 
So let's see 20 seconds. We don't want to do light attacks because they have extra defense. So a normal attack I think is is fine or even a sunder, which would uh, get rid of a bunch of armor. Let's see. It's going to be very close. It would be quite close to uh, pushing it back the way that we want. Um, what if we just do... So Sunder's pushing 15. If we just do a slash. That's going to push a little bit further. We get the crit. We do some of the armor damage. And then we'll set up the Vivisect heavy attack. And you can see even here, it takes into account the actions we've already programmed. So now we Vivisect... And that's going to push him into break as well. So we get the little crit to push it back. Heavy attack for extra damage and the break. But now we're, he's going to be immune to staggers. So we need to do something a little bit, little bit different here if we can. Uh, we could defend there or we might just throw down like a light attack. He'll take less damage which is fine, but we're going to push down that timeline because we'll still crit. Oh, no, but we can't. We can't even stagger. What am I talking about? So it doesn't matter. We're going to get hit. Let's go for the heavy damage and uh, show them what's up. Let's go another heavy attack here. Be strong. We could have... Uh, we could defend there too, but as you can see, like... We have a plenty of shields to chew through. Okay, so his shield's completely gone. And now we can start staggering again because he got an attack off. So we can start manipulating. Win, remember the combo attack we used to practice? Yeah, the one we broke Dad's grav hopper window doing? Yeah, that's the one. Now's a good time to try it out again. Good idea. Just make sure we've generated enough fury first. Here we go. So your heroes generate fury by landing crits and breaks on the enemy. Crits generate one fury, while breaks generate three fury. Use fury to execute special actions or combo maneuvers for devastating effects. Combos are special maneuvers that cost fury and are executed by one or by two of your heroes simultaneously. Each combo can only be executed once per combat. Combos are only available for heroes that have strong relationships which can be increased during camping. That's another thing about this game that I'm intrigued to really dive into is there's this whole relationship system. There's an adversary system. Think about like uh, the Battle for Middle Earth games, whatever they were, but when you have the uh, strong enemies that keep coming back with unique traits, this game has that and it's really cool. All right. So, uh, how much do we need for this? So, we need 27 Fury. We're at 25. So, we need to do some more crits. Let's do... I can probably get away with a... Well, can I get an earlier heavy attack here? They're right on there. I don't actually know if it's if it's that close, if it matters. Uh, but let's just do this. This will push them back. And then... We'll have enough Fury after that break to throw in the uh, Cyflex or Sifex Slam. Let's do another, another heavy attack here. Oh, this is just going to straight up kill him. Let me try and show this. Let's just do a... Uh, let's do a defend here. Just so I can show you the cool combo. Who's going to act early? Uh, looks like if we use a combo, it's instant. So we're going to throw this in. And this will be a kill shot. The Sifex Slam. From Davian and Win. A wham bam. Thank you, robot. Pretty sick. Okay. Mysterious figure. A temporary setback. Mother shall soon have her victory. We'll see. Stay back, Wayne. I'll take care of this guy. What he lacks in charisma, he makes up for in hideousness. Mother only wants you, Davian Syphex. She has no interest in the female. No way you're doing this solo, Dav. We need to work together to defeat him. Okay. So this is uh, real. This is a little bit more intense. A lot of armor. Uh, let's inspect here. Not a whole lot that we can gain from this. No uh, immunities or weaknesses. I think we're doomed to fail here. 
I think we're doomed to fail. Uh, let's see. Go flurry here. We don't have any crit bonuses though. The stab takes a bit long. I'm thinking we go slash. It's going to get rid of some armor and push back. Let's go. And then on the pushback, we can follow up with either one of these. But let's try Vivisect. I want to see if we're at the same. It actually does look like we crit if we're at the same point. I don't know how how intricate it can be, but... Maybe if it's a tie, we always go first. It'd be nice. Didn't quite break there. Enough. This is taking far too long and the results are inevitable. Dav, get back. Be careful. Okay, so there's no stagger happening here. 30 or 47. Let's go 47. And then if we want... Maybe we just throw these both on. Or Sunder and get rid of some armor. Let's Sunder. Not bad. But see, like, this is a fight. That, uh, yeah, there we go. This is a fight we're doomed to lose. It's too powerful. This can't be happening. Mother, I've done what you asked. Bring me back. I cannot last much longer. The Herald retreats. Don't give up, Dav. I can't do this without you. Dav, come on. Get up, please. I can't, I can't do it without you. And thus, we're in the throne room. So the throne room is where you can view details on the Imperium hierarchy and all the currently known leaders, behemoths, and adversaries. From time to time, you'll be brought here to witness events such as deaths, promotions, introductions within the Imperium. You can also access the Imperium Throne Room directly from the main menu. Adversaries are the elite soldiers of the Imperium. They're stronger, tougher, and have unique special traits and abilities. They also have unique personalities, so no two adversaries are ever the same. And every time you play the game, different adversaries with different traits. Like, you see where I'm going with this? Adversaries can also be promoted, evolve, or grow stronger whenever they're able to defeat you. Adversaries are usually guarding a rare or epic reward crate. Now we're talking. So, up here we've got Harold, the Omega Behemoth. Isn't that lovely? We have these different little... I think these indicate uh, adversaries on different planets. But then there's all these other big areas too. And I'm not sure how that gets filled out or if that gets filled out. Uh, but either way, we can see here different lieutenants, behemoths, commanders. Lieutenants a little bit more basic. Commander, behemoth. So we know the behemoth there or one of them. And it shows here, 50% uh, defense versus staggers, nothing immune, and no weaknesses. So, yeah, that's, that's something to worry about. Meanwhile, elsewhere. So now we're leaving. We're going somewhere completely different. Mysterious scientists. There, I found them. That's where the Imperium have invaded next. They must have already started their attack. All right, the only thing left to do is turn you on. Activate droid. Beautiful. All systems go. Maybe this fight isn't over after all. I did a pretty good job making you look like a run-of-the-mill servo bot. That should come in handy. Now, J5T1N. Kind of reminds me of, like, Justin. Should we just go with that? I feel like that's a decent, weirdly decent droid name. We have to go outside. I'll let you lead the way. Okay, so now we're controlling this droid. What the? These buildings usually aren't on fire. Usually. The attack just ended, but they'll be back soon to finish the job, so we have to hurry. The entry point is right over there. Pay attention, J5. Oh, yeah, okay, we can go with J5. J5. You need to walk through this portal and deliver a very important message for me. 
Find Professor Zurich. They're the only other person I can trust. This might be a little testy, but that's how geniuses are sometimes. Or they might be a little testy. Find them and play the message I gave you. Can you do that? Absolutely, says J5. I'll take that as a yes. Countless lives depend on you doing that. Though try not to let that give you a big head or sphere, I suppose. Go through the portal when you're ready. What's that? Don't worry about me. Your mission is the only thing that matters anymore. Okay, you said so. Okay, here we go. Let's hope this works. You made it good. Now here's hoping he can... There you are. Well, what are you waiting for? You got me, haven't you? So, okay. Story-wise, presumably what's going on here, uh, she's sending J5 through this portal for help, right? To go, and at some point, I imagine we're going to go back to find her and help the scientist based on the message from J5. We're back in this area. Many of you have told me what Davian meant to you. For that, I thank you. I only wish Davian were here so we could tell him, you could tell him directly. Thank you, Wynn. This is General Geddon, I guess. A moment of silence for our fallen warrior, please. And as like a basic servo bot, this actually is nice because people won't ask too many questions. Well, I can just get around wherever we want. See if there's anything important here. I just hope if this is an interdimensional invasion, that it's all over before life day. I'm not saying those signals we caught last night were extra dimensional aliens, but if they were, then I just hope I'm not going to get probed. <laughs> oh, probe jokes. I love a good probe joke. Now, on to the business at hand. Some of you have approached me wondering what the council plans to do with these raiders, the ones that destroyed the armada and killed Colonel Syphex. So Syphex, Colonel Syphex, remember the Syphex combo that dad taught us, eh? And as a member of the Joint Chiefs, let me just say, we have a plan. We will rebuild the Armada stronger than ever, and we'll send that vessel back to the hell it came from. Please. Professor Zurich, this is the person we're looking for. What do they say about not being... Wait, come here. Give me whatever message you have. I'm in the middle of studying the most important, unexplainable quantum phenomena of my career. So whatever this is, I hope it's reality. <laughs> reality shattering. Oh, it might be. Hello, Dr. Zurich. It's a hollow message. Okay, yeah, I guess that counts. Let's cut to the chase. I'm you, and you're me. Okay, you guys seeing what's going on here? We got some weird trippy time things going down. We're from different realities. I know this is highly confusing, even to you. I sent this hyper advanced servo bot across the quantum divide to warn you. Your reality is under attack even as we speak. Does this have anything to do with the Q71 entanglement phenomenon you detected over Norosh? Precisely. You certainly alerted the Star Union Council and they dispatched the Armada to investigate. You'll learn so very soon that the Armada has been destroyed by a starship of unimaginable power cloaked in the entanglement. The ship is from another reality and its goal is to conquer your entire galaxy. I know because they've already conquered mine. See, we saw all the fire outside and stuff. Yeah, I've got to warn them. It's far too late. But when the council calls seeking your brilliant expertise on parallel realities, you'll need to have a plan ready. And that's where I come in. I know these invaders next move and how you can stop them. If you follow my lead, your world has a shot. But if you fail, promise me you'll send J5 through to the next reality they invade because they will never stop. And I think that's like a gameplay implication. If we die, certain things kind of carry forward to try and still achieve ultimate victory. Now listen up. Here's the plan. The first step is this. Reach out to General Geddon and tell him and play and tell him and play this message. You'll need to explain it to him, but he'll help you form the kind of task force necessary to bring this invasion down. Can you imagine? So look, we have all these different planets to work through. Menku, Norosh, Dagon, and the ISS Eternal. It shows you which behemoth is present. Chimera, Goliath, Herald. This is DMN 2020. There we 
There we go. Niall Elson. Mother, you look especially pretty today. So this is our first adversary. Niall Elson. Menku Lieutenant. 11 shields, 230 health, a little bit of armor. He's an elite. Oh, the adversary is elite Imperium soldiers. He hates debuffs. Enraged when he gets debuffs. And he's weak versus concussion damage and weak versus light attacks. Something to keep in mind. Okay. I don't think there's anything else to do in here uh, other than to investigate these guys. So I think we just exit. But we come back here to get introduced to new adversaries. And when we defeat them, presumably we come back here as well. Rosker's Bay in Menku. General Geddon. Sorry about that. The engineer said the landing would be smoother. I've gone through worse landings lately. As long as you and J5 survived, it's a success in my books. Okay. You should help your companions with their pods. It seems like they're having a little trouble with the hatches. Check this out. Come on, J5. Help me out. We've got General Geddon and Professor Zurich via hollow here. Saboteur's landing pod and Archon's landing pod. Zerks Nurtza Archon level one joins the renegades. Hey, how was the trip? All praise Lord Batula for delivering us safely to the battlefield. Yeah, yeah, Titans be praised, etc. I get, I get it. Look, you're not going to try to convert me again, are you? A little history there. Let's go up here. Get our other party member. Nodo Cal Thoris. I'm locked and loaded, ready to roll out. Let's smoke these bogeys. What are you doing? I'm just talking like a space marine. Don't like it? I can switch to Nodo, Nodo normal style. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you, why don't you do that? No problemo. Normal it is, boyo. Enough chit chat. Move out and take control of that Imperium base. Kill anything that slows you down. Don't get cocky though. One of their elite soldiers or elite officers will be stationed at the base, and you'll have to go through him. We'll be in contact to provide mission specs along the way. Now lock and load, boyos. Time to tag and bag some Imperium drones and roll out. See? I told you that's how Space Marines talk. <laughs> My spiritual teachings tell me that both paths are favored for our objective. Your wisdom clearly knows no bounds. Boss lady, just so you know, these fundamentalists aren't big on sarcasm. This is true. We preach a radical form of honest discourse, devoid of exaggeration or any form of subtlety. You do? No, that was my demonstration of sarcasm to you, idiot human. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. And guys, with that, we have our party set. And I think we're going to wrap up episode one right here. I think this, personally, I'm super into it. So uh, I hope you guys really dig it. If you did enjoy this and you want this to be a series, hit the like button. Let me know down below and we'll, uh, we'll have a super time. I think this is going to be really fun. Every playthrough is different. So even if you're playing it yourself, things are going to go differently. You're going to see different relationships, different attributes. We haven't even learned about the relationship aspect yet. But when we do, I'm sure it's going to be super sick. Let's just see what we can check out from our squad here. Ah, it's just a nice little overview. Okay, so tanky. And we'll see what these guys do. Guys, thanks so much for watching. We're going to see you very soon. Bye for now.